Hi, everybody, and welcome to English Digest. I'm Pat. I'm Tom. Today we're talking about our program on the Discovery Channel. This particular show is called. Made by destruction, Ooh. and that sounds kind of like a scary title, but、uh, actually, it's talking about、uh, what happens to rubbish or garbage or trash after we throw it out. Of course, we know most of the time it it gets sent to a landfill or it goes to an incinerator. But hopefully, some of the stuff can get recycled, and we're going to try to show you what some of the stuff actually gets recycled into. That's right. Maybe we don't know the exact how things. How do you recycle A or B or C? How do you recycle an old fridge or a photocopier? And this TV show takes you through the journey of one of these items as all the different parts are kind of taken out and used, and how they're used. So it's it's getting pretty specific in the、uh, into the recycling industry. So let's find out the first example of this by reading through day one of our article. Have you ever stopped to consider what happens to your junk after you toss it out? To be sure, some of it ends up in landfills. We also know that some of it gets recycled. But how exactly does that happen, and what does it get recycled into? Discovery Channel's new show, Made by Destruction, aims to answer those questions. Now the ever curious can peek into a world where rubbish is reduced to its raw materials and repurposed as another product entirely. On Made by Destruction, technology and artistry work together in harmony. Obsolete objects are crushed or shredded into small pieces, separated down to their basic components, and then transformed into a new substance that will eventually take on a new form. Viewers follow the objects on their journey through the machinery that wrenches them apart, all the way to the warehouses where they're redesigned into polished musical instruments, affordable prosthetics, or other useful gadgets. Sims Recycling Solutions in California, U.S., extracts metals from electronic waste such as photocopiers. Operators begin the process by removing any toxic materials from the copiers, which then travel along a conveyor belt into the shredders. An industrial strength magnet then picks up any steel and separates it from the copper. The copper passes through a special filter into a shipping container below. It is sent to Olin Brass in Illinois, U.S., where foundry workers combine the copper with zinc. To produce brass and heat the metals until they melt, the brass is then pressed into thin sheets so that it can be easily transported to S. E. Shire's workshop in Massachusetts, U.S. There, it is reheated, reshaped, and converted into gleaming new trumpets. Now they're finally ready for their first glorious notes. Okay, everybody. Let's talk about turning trash into treasure, which you can see done on the Discovery Channel program "Made by Destruction," which means basically when things are destroyed, you can actually make it into something useful. Now, here in the first paragraph, we're going to be asking a question: Have you ever stopped to consider what happens to your junk? After you toss it out, I often wonder this. I often wonder、uh, when we separate our trash from our recyclables. Do the recyclables actually get recycled? That's my question. And then, if they are actually recycled and not just sent to the incinerator, what becomes of them? What are they turned into? It is a good question and something we maybe ought to think about more, so we can recycle and reuse more. The article says, "To be sure, meaning surely, and there is no denying it, some of it ends up in landfills, which are、uh, large holes or old mine shafts that aren't used anymore. Basically, big open spaces, mostly under the earth,、uh, that things can be thrown in. Basically, they're just poured down there. Sadly, because we can't get rid of them any other way, so they're just buried and piled up out of the way." 
Yeah, I think there's a big landfill out in Nangang in Taipei, and、uh, of course there's a big landfill on Staten Island in New York City. It's probably the world's largest landfill. But in any case, yes, to be sure, some of that trash just cannot be handled, cannot be reprocessed or recycled. So they just bury it in a landfill. We also know that some of it gets recycled, but how exactly does that happen, and what does it get recycled into? That's basically the same. Question I was asking earlier in the program. Yes, we do have recycled stuff, but how does that happen? How does that work? And then, what does that stuff get recycled into? So I guess you could、uh, focus on that phrase there: to recycle something into something else, to change it into something that is useful. Well, Discovery Channel's new show, Made by Destruction, aims to answer the questions. So now, by watching this, the ever curious or people who always want to know things and find out more, or so we could say, always curious people who are always curious, can peek into a world where rubbish or garbage, trash, is reduced to its raw materials and repurposed as another product entirely. So, peek is、uh, a look at something. It's、uh, a kind of a closer look, a more detailed look. Into something to find out more or to understand it completely.、Uh, raw materials here. We're talking about the actual raw metals like iron and copper and some of those other things, or raw plastics, or even things like wood. Or bits of、uh, cotton, that kind of raw material that's used to make and build other things. And by repurposing, we mean we give it a new purpose. So instead of being like wood that's used to make a chair, it could be something else. Instead of metal that's in an old computer, it becomes metal that's used for a different purpose. Exactly. Most of the times when we recycle something, we're just、uh, changing it back into its original form, so it can be used as the same thing again. Like plastic bottles,、mm -hmm. they're melted, and then that plastic is used to make more plastic bottles. But here we're repurposing those things.、Uh, like I think I saw a video somewhere where they took plastic bottles and broke them down, and then made that material into carpeting.、Mm. So that's an example of repurposing something, giving it another purpose. Or another use. Now let's move on now to the following paragraph. Again, we're talking about our featured program, Made by Destruction. So on Made by Destruction on this program, technology and artistry work together in harmony. So we've got technology, of course, using machines and different kinds of skills and techniques to do these things. But we've also got. Artistry and artistry usually refers to creativity when you kind of think about something that hasn't been done before. Yep, and here we've got technology and creative thinking working in harmony, so they're working well together. One is complementing or helping the other. So there's no point in saying these two things are different worlds, technology and artistry. No, we're putting them together and combining the best features of both, so they're working side by side in harmony. So let's get into how they do this. This is an overall example of the general process here. Obsolete objects, so objects we don't need anymore or have no further use, are crushed. So they're smashed down. So instead of a large photocopier, say that's crushed down into just a ball of metal and plastic, or it's shredded into small pieces. To shred means to cut things up into long strips or into small parts, just by giant sharp metal claws. To shred these things down, and then they are separated into their basic components. So they go, okay, let's take out the metal, the plastic, you know, some of the harmful stuff, maybe some of the wiring, some of the outside frame. Just separate it all out into different piles, and then transform it into a new substance that will eventually take on or become a new form. Cool. So again, these are obsolete objects, objects that no longer have any use. They're broken down, they're shredded, and separated into their basic components, whether it's plastic, metal, wood, or whatever. And then they transform it, as you said, into a new substance that will take on a new form. So here we've got the verb phrase to take on. You could also say assume a new form. It will become a new form. So again, that's kind of an example of repurposing something. 
They break it down into its basic elements, and then they use those basic elements to make something totally new. Yeah, it's like breaking down a Lego house and using the little Lego blocks to build three more Lego houses. Okay, or something totally it, different. Yeah, Lego horse or Lego wall. So viewers of this show follow the object on their journey from the start to the finish through the machinery or all the different machines that wrenches or pulls them apart. So they see them going into the factories and being shredded and crushed and pulled into their component parts, and then all the way to the warehouses. These big houses where things are stored or held or worked on, where they're redesigned into polished musical instruments. That's one example. Polished means it's been kind of、uh, rubbed with a soft material and maybe some kind of special metal polishing material or fluid or product to make it shine. Like you would polish your shoes to make them clean and new looking and shiny. They also make affordable prosthetics. That's kind of fake arms, fake legs, fake hands to replace things that people have lost, and other useful gadgets. A gadget is just something that's useful. We usually think of something small that does a particular. Purpose. It's used to achieve a particular end. Like a bottle opener is a gadget. Some kind of electronic thing that finds where you left your car keys is a gadget. Even smartphones are very complicated gadgets. Or your pad, computer, or notebook, computer, or whatever. Those are all electronic gadgets. So again, this is the process. We're using machinery here. I did want to say that machinery is again referring to several machines being used together, not just one. So we don't say machine. We say machinery. They're all ripped apart, redesigned. They're polished. And、uh, hey, if we talk about polished and shiny musical instruments, that makes me think of、uh, some village in Taiwan that's famous for. Making saxophones, maybe they do the same thing. I used to know the name of the village, but I forgot. Please forgive me. But、uh, you can do this:、uh, polish musical instruments.、Uh, I can imagine saxophones or trumpets、mm-hmm. or trombones or tubas or well or sousaphones or whatever. And yes, prosthetics. Like、uh, my grandfather's、uh, friend lost his leg in the Korean War, so he wore a prosthetic, which was like a fake leg. He always walked with a limp or something. And yes, other. Useful gadgets. So yes, indeed, they're putting all these things to good use, and that we're seeing how this is done on this program made by Destruction. We're going to continue talking about this right now after we take a break. But please stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hi everyone, my name is Jenny. 今天我们要看的是第九单元。第九单元呢，里面的内容要谈一个 Discovery 频道上的节目，它叫 Made by Destruction。好，我们知道这个 destruction 表示破坏。什么叫做 made by destruction？ 用破坏来制造东西，其实这跟我们中文讲的化腐朽为神奇很相似。把丢掉的垃圾拿回来再利用，那能够生产出什么新的东西来呢？这个文章内容谈的可能会让大家非常的惊讶。首先，我们就先看，当然，一般垃圾最后是到了 landfills， 也就是垃圾掩埋场里头。可是，我们如果把它拿回来再利用，也就是 recycle 之后，那可以怎么办？这个节目里面就要告诉大家。不过，这边第一段的最后这句，我们稍微留意一下，他就说了 ：Now the ever curious can peek into a world。好，先看到这里 ，the。Ever curious? We know that "ever" 这个字就有表示一直不断那种含义，所以说它加了个 curious 在后面，表示是一直不断感到好奇。那我们前面加一个的，定冠词的的，如果后面加一个形容词，哎，可能它指的就变成是这一群有这种特质这样子的人了。所以 the ever curious。就是指说你总是哎对事情感到好奇的人呢，透过这个节目就可以看到这个废弃物被分解之后，然后彻底的重新被利用，做成另外一个产品这样的世界。我们还要注意的一个地方就是 where 提到说一个什么样的世界 ，a world where rubbish is reduced。到这里为止，这个 where 我们知道它其实是一个关系副词。
，在这个世界里头，那我们知道它这个 world 前面这个先行词，接在后面的关系子句，当你指的是在这个地方，整个副词我们就用 where 来取代。下面这一段呢，我们就要看这个节目了。这个节目的内容，它真的是非常的神奇。它整个过程说到了大家不要的东西，然后怎么样被 crushed, shredded， 也就是说，哎，被压碎、被切碎，然后呢，再怎么样 separated down to their basic components。好，这一连串的动作都是被动，东西被压碎、被分解，然后呢，最后还有一个。被 transform， 也就是变形、改变成为成为一个大家可以看到新的外形。好，那你会整个过程看到，最后它成了一个光鲜的乐器，成了平价的一支。这真的是非常的不同。We are going to take a short break now, but please stay tuned. We'll be right back. 然后他们采集石头，从石头里取出一些石头，比如石头，从石头里取出一些石头。从石头里取出一些石头，意味着从石头里取出一些石头。比如，我们有橘子，我们可以取出橘子，从石头里取出一些橘子，从石头里取出一些橘子。从石头里取出一些橘子，从石头里取出一些橘子。从石头里取出一些橘子，从石头里取出一些橘子。从石头里取出一些橘子，从石头里取出一些橘子。从石头里取出一些橘子，从石头里取出一些橘子。从石头里取出一些橘子，从石头里取出一些橘子。从石头里取出一些橘子，从石头里取出一些橘子。Take them out so you can use them. So you need to find ways to extract them.、Mm-hmm. Extract also can talk about teeth. If you,、mm. if you're bad boys and girls, and you're not brushing and flossing your teeth on a daily basis, you might have to have a tooth extracted, and you don't want that to happen. It not only hurts, but it's extremely expensive to get a fake tooth to replace it. So please take care of your teeth. And so we're extracting metal or metals, different kinds of metal, from electronic waste, maybe from old computers, and in this case, photocopiers and operators begin. In the process by removing any toxic materials from the copiers. Toxic here just means poisonous, something that can cause harm to living things. Toxic, and、uh, of course, these are traveling along a conveyor belt、uh, and into the shredders. So yes, this is all part of a process, like a factory. We have a conveyor belt. We have them in factories. It just the product is on this belt, going from one worker to the next. The first worker does something to it. The next one does something else, etc. It goes along this belt,、uh, a conveyor belt. That's from the verb to convey, which means to move something from one place to. Another. Yeah, you see these conveyor belts mostly these days. You'll think of them in airports, the things that move your luggage around. But yeah, in a or in a sushi place when that's moving your sushi around. So here they put the copiers. They've had their toxic material removed. Okay, they travel along this long moving belt into shredders, which are types of machines. I mentioned earlier, shredded. The verb. This is shredder, a noun. So these will be a machine with very sharp. Sharp blades that just just kind of rip all these photocopiers apart, just slice them and shred them down into just bits of metal and plastic. So we don't know at the moment how、uh, how fine these shredders are, how small they slice and shred the photocopiers down to. But I imagine they really cut them down into little tiny pieces. 
Probably. Also, I'm thinking another meaning of the word shredder is somebody who plays an electric guitar、mm. really, really fast, especially in heavy metal music. But、uh, that's a totally different meaning here. We're shredding all these、uh, objects, this photocopier, and getting rid of the toxic materials. And then what we have is an industrial strength magnet. Then picks up any steel and separates it from the copper. Very good. This is、uh, a strong magnet, but if something is really Really strong for use in factories and things like that. We call it an industrial strength magnet.、Uh, we also have things like industrial strength cleaners. A cleaner that is designed to clean a big factory room. Probably it would be too much for your kitchen. That's right. So it's taking the steel、uh, and it's separating it from the copper. Copper is another type of metal. It's often found used in pipes and indeed the Statue of Liberty, which is made of copper. Okay, so then the copper, this useful material, this passes through a special filter into a shipping container below. Okay, a filter is、uh, kind of like a surface or a screen with some holes in it, or sometimes you can use it with magnets, and it will keep some things in the filter and it will send out other stuff below. So it kind of stops some things. Passing through it, it's a kind of screen. If you think of a coffee filter, it will let out the liquid coffee below while keeping the coffee grounds, the kind of powdery stuff, in the filter. So it's a way of separating things to make it sort of purer. You、yes. might also use a water filter as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, to clean your water and take out the things you don't want. So this is making sure the copper that goes through the filter is only copper. Other things they don't want, other impurities, other metals are not going to be there when it lands in the shipping container, which is kind of like a giant box that can be taken on a boat or on a big truck from one place to another. And here it's going off to Illinois. Yeah, maybe it's being shipped on a ship. Here we can see shipping containers all over the place in Gaoshong and Geelong. Well, then it is sent all the way across the country, the U.S. to a place in Illinois called Olin Brass. Illinois is where Chicago is, and there we have foundry workers who combine the copper with zinc.、Uh, that's another metal, another element, and they use it to produce brass. And then they heat these metals until they melt. So these are foundry workers. A foundry basically is a place where metal is cast. Yeah, they heat the metal up. They pour it into a mold or a frame to give it a particular shape. So brass is a kind of a mixed metal. It's copper and zinc, and it's put together, so it's got some good qualities. So they've got this brass that comes out of it. The brass is then pressed into thin sheets. Okay, so it's flattened down. They've got it into almost like paper thin, or you know, a long sheet. Of brass, which is easy to transport, because it's easy to transport sheets of flat stuff. So now it's taken even further in the U.S. It's taken fur slightly further north and further east to Massachusetts, which is again in the U.S. to S. E. Shire's workshop. And a workshop is, I always think of it as like a smaller version of a factory. You know, there's going to be people working there, working on things. It's a workshop. You know, they're using materials, they're making things. But it's not as big as a full-on factory. And I tend to think of a workshop as involving、uh, people using their hands yeah, to make things. Yeah, more often than big machines. Exactly. So my goodness, this stuff has moved all the way from California to Illinois, and now we're on the East Coast in Massachusetts, where Boston is. There's the workshop there, and there the metal is reheated, reshaped, and converted into gleaming new trumpets. Hey, trumpets! Those are pretty fun instruments that you can use in jazz and in marching bands and stuff. Like that, they are shining and they are gleaming.、Uh, gleaming is、uh, similar to shining, which means they just、uh, give off a lot of reflected light. That's right. And so we also saw the word converted means it's changed from one thing into another. So you've got these flat sheets of brass, and they're reheated, so they melt, put in a mold to reshape them and give them a new shape. And now they're trumpets, which are ready for their first glorious notes. Here we mean notes.、Uh, As in musical notes, the kind of things you create when you blow or play an instrument, and they're glorious. They're full of kind of glory and power and 
wonder and something to move you. That's why we call it a glorious note. The kind of thing that's like, wow, that is a great sound. And we often use glorious with trumpets because of、mm. that sound, like you're calling somebody, like here, come here. You know, something exciting's happening, or we're announcing the king, kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. You would use an instrument like a trumpet because they are very loud. And very、uh, sonorous, I guess you could、uh, describe them as,、uh, and they are often used in ceremonies and things like that. So yes, indeed, if you play the trumpet,、uh, people are going to be listening to you, like、uh, Miles Davis or other people like that. So, or maybe you might even be playing the Haydn Trumpet Concerto. And、uh, make everybody sit and listen with great attention. So that's an example of how they're recycling your photocopier. Imagine that your photocopier will eventually become a trumpet that is going to be played in the next Fourth of July parade or something、oh, wow, like that. Wow, that would be glorious. Okay, well that is the end of day one. We'll be back tomorrow to look at another kind of recycling process, start to finish. But right now we're going to give you to our Chinese teacher. 好，那我们再来就要看什么样的东西。第一点，这边要提的就是乐器部分。乐器部分怎么样从回收的东西里面，然后把它制造出来呢？好，这一段下面就说到，在美国有一个公司，这家呢就是一个做回收的公司，它呢可以把影印机这种的电子废弃物，然后怎么？经过一连串的过程之后，成为我们手中可以弹出美妙乐章的乐器呢？这真的是很神奇。不过这一整个段落里面，它我们要看到的就是说，它有一些字词汇的运用。比如说，第一点 ，extract，extract extract 是萃取，从什么地方萃取出来？你接词用 from， 那一样的，后面又用到一个动词 removing。他提到要把毒的、有毒的物质给它分离出来。那这个 remove any toxic materials from the copiers， 还是介系词 from。那我们知道，它这是从影印机来做出，哎，分离出一些它有用的物质。所以这个 copiers 后面逗点，然后写 which， 这个也是一个非限定用法，就是顺便告诉你说。这个 copier 影印机啊，哎，它呢经过这个过程，然后就会到输送带那边，然后进了切碎机。好，这个地方再往下读，它的过程还没有结束哦。当然，你经过了这道手续之后，再来它会有一个 magnet 这种具有工业用强度的磁铁，然后把里面的钢 steel。给它抽取出来，所以我们这边段落也学到了很多不同的金属物质。除了这个 steel 之外，后面还有一个字是 copper， 就是铜。好，他说钢跟铜要分离出来，然后铜呢又经过一个 filter 过滤器，然后接下来呢，最后它被送到集装箱里面，然后被再利用。看到了这里，我们已经学到了很多种不同的词汇，包括 steel， 包括 copper。但是我们还有一个，就是黄铜这种金属物质是 brass。这也就是它下面那个步骤，提说送到一家黄铜公司，然后这边的工人再把它怎么样？哎，再把它把这个所谓的 copper 加上的 zinc， 那又来一个金属物质锌。好，把铜。更新，然后结合出来以后，就成为黄铜了。提到了这边，当然整个过程最后的目的，就是要先把它压成了薄片。用这个薄片之后，就可以怎么样？用到了 so that 表示目的哦。So that 这样子压成薄片之后，它就可以被送到另外一个地方，这个加工厂，然后制造成乐器。我们今天这边的说明就到这里结束，我们下次见。Okay, so that is the end of our article for today. But join us again tomorrow for another look at Made by Destruction to see what can happen to fridges. That is tomorrow's article. But for now, we're going to say goodbye. Thank you very much for listening. I'm Pat, and I'm Tom. Bye. Bye.